Welcome to the Pediatric Advanced Life Support Chapter on Post-Resuscitation Management in Children. Once the child's health is under proper control and there is a return of spontaneous circulation, you will need to apply proper post-resuscitation care to assure the optimal recovery of the child. This method assesses various organ systems so the correct treatment techniques are applied. We will go through each organ system and the various aspects to monitor, lab tests to run, physical exams to administer, and any other point of note during the post-resuscitation of the child. After the return of spontaneous circulation in the child, first assess the cardiovascular system, monitor the child's heart rate and rhythm, their blood pressure, blood oxygen level, and urine output. Conduct a physical examination checking the quality of central and peripheral pulses, heart rate, as well as the child's temperature and color. Monitor end organ function. Run lab tests to check arterial blood gas, hemoglobin, and hematocrit levels. Also check serum glucose, electrolytes, blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, calcium. Run labs on lactate and central venous oxygen saturation. Look at x-rays to check correct ET tube insertion, heart size, and pulmonary edema. Check the child's heart activity with a 12-lead ECG and heart movement with an echocardiogram. Get vascular access and give fluid boluses of 10 to 20 milliliters per kilograms of isotonic crystalloid over 5 to 20 minutes. Administer blood if necessary and maintain fluids. Monitor the child's blood pressure. Treat hypotension with vasoactive drugs and treat any arrhythmia if they are the cause of hypotension. Give the child a vasopressor to construct their blood vessels if they have vasodilation-induced hypotension. If the child has any arrhythmias, consult an expert. Tachyarrhythmias and bradyarrhythmias should be treated with medicine and cardioversion. If the child has post-arrest myocardial dysfunction for 4 to 24 hours after the return of spontaneous circulation, give them vasoactive agents to fix hemodynamic functions and maintain blood pressure and perfusion. Now turn your attention to the gastrointestinal system. Monitor the type and quality of nasogastric tube drainage. Conduct a physical abdominal examination and check the sounds, girth, and tightness of intestines and bowels. Get lab tests to check liver functions by ALT levels, albumin, PT, bilirubin, glucose, ammonia, and other related tests. Check pancreatic function with amylase and lipase test. Take an ultrasound to check liver, gallbladder, pancreas, and bladder. Get an abdominal CT scan to check for trauma. If the child is experiencing gastric distension, put in an orogastric or nasogastric tube to aspirate stomach air and its contents. Insert an NG feeding tube. If there is a lack of movement in the intestines, put in an OG or NG tube to aspirate gastric fluids and contents. Maintain electrolyte and fluid balance. If the child develops hepatic failure, administer glucose and correct the clotting factor and use fresh frozen plasma for bleeding. When assessing the hematologic system in the child, find the causes of external or internal hemorrhages with a physical examination. Check skin for pallor, petechia, or bruising. Get lab tests to check hemoglobin and hematocrit levels, platelet count, prothrombin time, PTT, INR, fibronogen, and D-dimer. This concludes our first video on post-resuscitation management in children. Please proceed to the next video to learn more.